Everything looks better with some ink bleed and everything feels better when you can do it in just one click. So I'm gonna show you how to make these actions for yourself. What's going on y'all? I am Jerome with JeronSupply.com where I help you design smarter, not harder. First of all, I hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving and I apologize for the lack of videos. I just needed some rest and relaxation, but I'm here now and today is Friday. So we're actually gonna do something that I'm gonna call five minute Friday. So I'm gonna put five minutes on the clock. Here's how to make custom one click ink bleed actions in Photoshop. First of all, open up a document within Photoshop. As always, I'm gonna recommend you use a 300 DPI document. I'm currently using a 16 by 20 inch large document at 300 DPI. And now let's just go type out our text using the type tool. So press T on your keyboard and type out your text. I'm gonna go with the standard ink bleed here and just size that up. And the font I'm using is called Podium Shark. Then we're gonna to need to make a new action within the actions panel. So if you don't have that open, go ahead and go up to window and then open up actions as the first one in the menu. And once you have that panel open to create a new action, you're simply just gonna to have to click this plus icon at the bottom of the panel. So let's click that to create a new action. It's gonna prompt us for a name. I'm just gonna type in ink bleed tutorial. And as soon as I create that new action, it's going to be recording everything I do on my canvas. So don't do anything unless you want it to be a step in the action. So now with our text layer selected, let's go ahead and open up the layer styles on that text by double clicking the layer. Go ahead and add a stroke. You wanna set the stroke color to white if your text is black and black if your text is white. I'm going to be demonstrating this using black type. So with a white stroke, have the opacity on 100, the position on outside, and turn the size all the way up to the max setting. Then just to make sure this type is the color I want it, I'm going to go ahead and click on the color overlay here and set that to black. Cool, now let's press okay on this. As you can see, it recorded that step of setting the layer styles in our action here. So now let's go ahead and right click our layer and turn this into a smart object. Now let's head over to the filter gallery and here's where we can get creative. I already have sort of an ink bleed preset set up here. I'm just gonna turn this all off and we're gonna build this from scratch. So let's go ahead and create our stack of effects. The first effect that you wanna throw on this is diffuse glow in the distort folder. So just click on diffuse glow, turn the graininess all the way down and the glow and clear amount all the way up. This is what your text is gonna look like, but for now, let's go ahead and turn off the diffuse glow and add a new effect layer by clicking on this plus icon down here and make sure this one is turned on. So click on that eyeball here so you could see it. And then for this effect layer, we're gonna choose the collapse filter which is also in distort make sure that the texture is on frosted the scale you can really turn to whatever you want i'm going to keep it around 100 for now the distortion is on four and the smoothness is on four that's just the preset i'm using but you can come back to this later and adjust the distortion for a grungier feel or the smoothness for a lighter feel and already we're getting this distressed effect but let's go ahead and polish that so let's add a new effect layer and this one's going to be stamp which is in the sketch category the light dark balance doesn't really matter here but the smoothness we can turn all the way from five to even 40. I'm going to go with about maybe 18 here. Then finally, let's make a new effect layer and throw on the torn edges filter, which is also in the sketch category. Set the image balance around 20, the smoothness on 13, and the contrast to around 10. Now let's press okay on this. So we have the ink bleed effect going here and it looks nice, but if I turn on a different background, you see we still have that stroke going on around the text. So with the action still recording, let's go ahead and open up the layer styles of this layer and just drag the white slider of the blend if section for the current layer inwards a bit, then hold down all or option on your keyboard Board, click on this little node here and it's going to split that then drag the left side portion of that a bit out more to the left now let's press ok on that and we're done so that action recorded each step of our process and it's actually still going so go ahead and click on the stop icon next to the red circle here and that's going to stop the recording of the action now you can use this action whenever you want for this quick ink bleed effect just select your text layer click play on the action and now your text has that beautiful ink bleed effect in one click and you can even open up the smart object with your text and edit your text to whatever you want save the smart object with command s go back into your parent document, and now the ink bleed effect is taking place on that edited text, which is really cool. All right, I hope I got all of that in five minutes. Now I'm gonna do some explaining away from the tyranny of the timer, because I want you to understand this better and be able to make better actions that better suit your workflow. So that was pretty simple, but now you can make as many iterations of this action as you want simply by tweaking the settings in the filter gallery each time. As you can see, my custom action set has options for a light bleed, standard bleed, heavy bleed, and even an outline bleed. And you can download this whole set of ink bleed actions for free on JeronSupply.com. Simply scroll all the way down and input your email into the 
input email box and they will be emailed to you along with all of my other freebies. So definitely go ahead and do that. And while you're on there, you might notice that I'm actually having my Black Friday sale where you can get all of my design assets for up to 70% off. So all of my bundles are 50% off the already discounted price of the bundle or new to this site, you can actually craft your own bundle and get anywhere from 30 to 50% off any of my design assets. If you're looking to up your merch design game, this is the cheapest that my merchandise master kit will ever be. So definitely go ahead and grab that or get any of my products for up to 50% off, like my new Mob Glow plugin for Photoshop for that dreamy, realistic glow in your artwork or photos. You could try out my new warm plastic salt 2 textures, depth tone or chrome tone for up to 50% off. The sale only happens once a year and won't last much longer. So definitely go ahead and take advantage of that. Now to quickly explain a little bit more about how this works. It's very simple, like I said, and the reason it's set up this way is because we need a white background for the filter gallery to do its magic. So that's why we added that white stroke, as you can see in the smart object here. If I turn this stroke off and then I go ahead and save this with command S, Back in our parent document, we can see that it still has the filter gallery effect on that smart object, but nothing is happening to the type. So when we turn that stroke on and we have that white background behind our text, it allows the filter gallery to do its thing. And when you're making this action, of course, you could play with any of these settings that you want in the filters in the filter gallery. So I'm gonna recommend that you either go download my set and just have you know these preset uh, options for the ink bleed, or when you're making this action for yourself, that you actually make a few iterations of the same action. And the only thing you change pretty much is the settings in the filter gallery. And you could save those actions as different presets in your actions panel. So I'm going to open up the filter gallery here and just show you a little bit more about how these settings can change the, the effect or the look. So you notice I made you add the diffuse glow and then we didn't actually use it. But if you do wanna use that, I included that in here because once we turn it on, you see we could choke the ink or the text a lot sort of inwards. And so if you don't like that the ink bleed effect is sort of making your text look too bubbly or it's merging all of the letters together too much, then you can use this effect to sort of counteract that and choke the, choke the text inwards before doing any of that ink bleed. It also helps to have this on when you're using uh, pretty much more distress in the other filters or more smoothness or whatever. You know, this is something you can play around with yourself and see for yourself. Uh, but this is just something I wanted to add in there. Um, just in case you were running into that issue or if you like, you know, this stylized look. Now the glass filter is really where this all, you know, comes to fruition. The distortion, I was gonna say distortion pedal, not the distortion pedal, the distortion slider here is what's gonna control all of the, you know, distortion and the grungy look on this ink bleed. And so when you're making a heavier or lighter action preset, you can turn up the distortion for more of a heavy look. And when you're making a lighter preset, you can turn the smoothness up to sort of smooth out that distortion. And this is much more of a clean ink bleed, which I also really like. And of course, this is also being compounded by the smoothness of the stamp filter. So if we turn that smoothness down, we can see that we get a little bit more of that subtle sort of distress coming through. And with that smoothness up, it of course, you know, smooths out all that distress and gives us that tasty ink bleed. And then finally, we have the torn edges filter on top of everything. And this is sort of just polishing the look and giving us obviously these torn edges, which is a very slight sort of addition, but it really brings it all together. And if you want, you can play around with the smoothness of this filter to get more of a, you know, sort of diffused effect or more of a clean effect. And that's really about it. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I post these videos every week to help you become Become a better designer. Don't forget to check out my Black Friday sale and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.